Maybe I'm crazy, but I might have to become a Tom Brady zealot. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. Welcome to the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Thanks for hanging out with us today. We'll talk to Akib Talib, all things NFL, Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, and of course, the upcoming Super Bowl between the GOAT and the kid. By the way, what a great media argument about who came up with the goat in the kid line. Uh, it's not that clever, guys. <laughs> Just baby goat, the actual goat. Anyway, that aside, um, he's really great. We'll talk to him in just a few minutes. We'll also talk to the crazy gang, Heller, Donnie, and T. A lot going on. Uh, am I going to have to become a Brady zealot? You know, I've been watching him for a very long time, as of all of us, except for I'm a Dolphins fan, so I've been suffering while watching Tom Brady. And now he might win his seventh ring and make me have to be a zealot. And is Aaron Rodgers going to stay with the Packers? And of course, today is unfortunately the anniversary of the death of Kobe Bryant and Gigi. So we miss you, Mamba. You're always in our hearts and minds and Gigi as well. Um, so just want to make sure we mention that because I know it's, uh, it's always a tough anniversary. So we're praying for their families and the families of everyone else that died in that tragic accident a year ago. But let's get started with Akib Talib. All right, very excited to have Akib Talib on the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Um, Akib also did an amazing job on play-by-play, -play, quickly became one of my favorite play-by-play -play guys this year. Uh, what was that like for you? I did play-by-play -play for the first time this year for uh, Prime Video. But, oh, yeah. Uh, you were really fun. You were very comfortable, like just fit right in. It was dope. It was dope. Uh, it's crazy because, like, I ain't grow up like I'm finna do this when I get older. I ain't. I ain't really say when I get done, I'm gonna go call games. It kind of just fell in my lap, really, and I enjoyed it. I, I, the the main thing I was worried about, like, when I left the booth, I was gonna be like, man, that was that was like work. Like I didn't, you know, what I'm saying I thought it was gonna feel like work, but it actually felt like playing. I kind of left. I was excited about the game, and I was like, Shit, I enjoyed that. You know what I'm saying? So. That was that was my concern right there. I didn't know how I was gonna feel after the first game, so to speak. So I enjoyed it and that was the most important part. So man, I could see myself doing it. Well, you should. It was very fun uh, to watch you in the booth. Um, you come on with us on the herd a lot and have a lot to say. So I thought it was a, I thought it was a nice addition. So congrats yeah. on that. Um, Appreciate so it. We have the Super Bowl set and old man Tom is in there. I'm not gonna lie, I am surprised. <laughs> now, I thought they would make the playoffs uh, as a wild card team, because I you know, obviously thought the Saints would win the division, but man, he's really in the Super Bowl again. Is that crazy to you? Because it's crazy to me. It's not really that crazy to me, Joy. I, I'm telling you, you watched that first episode, they might've posted on my page. Then was my Super Bowl picks. I picked the Chiefs and the Bucks, and I picked them because Tom ain't never really had a team like that. He had a defense like that before, but man, I guess I guess Moss and them was on was you know what I'm saying a team like that, but uh, explosive team like that. Then they added AB. Man, it was I don't know. I I know Tom. I know he he worked with. I don't want to say scraps, but Tom he worked with what he have all the time. So if you give him you know a, a star studded cast like that and a defense, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard to beat that team. So uh, it don't surprise me that much. Akeem, if you pick the Bucks and the Chiefs at the beginning of the season, you're supposed to brag about it. You gotta let everybody I, I, know. I'll I, I post it on my page. You know, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I put it on my page just to let them know my picks that I did pick is, is, is it was the right pick. But if you just look at them two teams, though, it's those quarterbacks. You really can't play zone against them with the weapons they got on the outside. You really can't play man against them, and they they one of the few teams who like that in the league. And then they got the quarterback on that cal on that level who can, if you play zone against them, they're gonna dice your ass up. So it's only Mahomes and Tom. Mahomes is like the young Tom right now. Like he is the young Tom. He he understands the game at the highest level right now. And, and you 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 don't see guys, it's not one of those RG3 situations where he came in explosive and he probably gonna die out. Nah, Pat Mahomes not gonna die out. He gonna he gonna ball every year he's healthy. So it's 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 the old the the YG versus the OG man. This is this is special. This is special Super Bowl right here. And I called it, Joy. I promise you. 
watch the well, show. Well, you deserve credit because I, I had the Saints and the Ravens at the beginning of the season. And then at the start of the playoffs, I picked the Packers and the Chiefs. The Packers really surprised me. No, no, I actually shouldn't say they surprised me. The play calling didn't surprise me. Aaron Rodgers yeah. not being big in the biggest moment surprised me. And he was obviously very down after the game and kind of implied like, you know, he might not be here next year or something like that. <laughs> nobody really believes. But right. what did you think about the play calling there going for the field goal in that moment? I don't think you can beat in AFC championships, Super Bowls, those kind of moments. Monday night. Sunday night games and big moments like that, you can't you can't be scared. You scared if you if you ain't going for it, if you got if you're not going for it right there and you think you're gonna get the ball back against Tom Brady, you scared really. You know what I'm saying? So you can't play scared against teams like that. The Buffalo did the same thing. Y'all kicking field goals. You can't play scared against them guys. You gotta you know you gotta let them have it, Joy. You gotta look them in their eye. If you don't get it, you don't get it. Now they starting back up. You got to use that as, as your advantage. You know what I'm saying? So I don't do it. If I was a coach, I'm going for it. And both of those games and both of those, all those situations, especially in big games like that, man, you don't have nothing to lose. You got to go for it. No, I agree. And like, I think sometimes coaches get stuck on like the analytics of the situation or, you know, they're just examining how the rest of the game could go. And we got to get points and this, that, and the other. And really LaFleur did himself a disservice because we're not really talking so much about how Aaron Rodgers did in the red zone, which was not great yeah. for nine. And he right. should have ran the ball in on the play before right. and he didn't, he hesitated. But because they kicked the field goal, we're just talking about kicking the field goal. But if right. you so put it's... it in Aaron Rodgers' hands, I can live with, okay, you put the game in Aaron Rodgers' hands and he didn't get it done. Right. I can live with that. I can't live with kicking a field goal and being conservative in the biggest moment. Mm -mm. And Rogers shouldn't have lived with it. You know, it's he and Rogers. So if you like, man, man, we need to go. Like that's gonna hold weight. You know what I'm saying? It's I don't know. It's it's a killer instinct, man. I I Tom them would have kicked that field goal. I mean, Tom them would not have kicked that field goal. Tom would have been like, Bruce, we gotta go right here. Like we gotta go right here. And they would have went right there. Yo, coach, man, good coaches, good coaches trust their players. So. Any coach going to trust Aaron Rodgers, right? If he like, man, we need to run. We need to go for it and run this play right here. Like, I could have ran it in last play, bro. I'm like, you could have convinced him to go for it. So it's 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 hand in hand with me. It's the coach and, and the next leader on the team besides the coach is the quarterback, especially if you're an A-Rod or somebody like that. So, man, they got to get that done. That's on, that's on both of them guys. Well, the other team that lost this weekend was the Bills. Um, I still feel like the Bills are a, a, a few steps away from that, like, I, I felt like the Chiefs were going to win this game anyway. Yeah, I like what Josh Allen has done. I do like that the Bills have stuck with Josh Allen and developed him and not bailed on him. But do you, do, are the, you see them back here next year? Because we know Super Bowl windows close very easily and very quickly with injury here, a trade Definitely. there, and they all fall apart. But I say, I always say it's a quarterback driven league, right? And Josh Allen, he one of them guys. He's not, he ain't, he's not a, a fluke. I'm here now. I'm going to die out. He's not one of those guys, neither. He got legit talent. Uh, he got legit skills. He, he extended the play. So, and then uh, uh, he got good. He got a good coaching situation too, man. He got a great coordinator over there. And I think they just, they just was, it's the, it's the Andy Reid effect, man. Andy Reid been doing this for a long time. So I feel like he really outcoached, he outcoached Buffalo from whatever they gave him on defense, from his offense to defense to, to situational football, he just all the way around outcoached them. So I think that's why they at home, but I think they, they, they'll be all right. I think the Bills is going to be making noise in the FC and the FC East for sure for a while to come. Them and the Dolphins, they, they're going to go neck and neck and they're going to be 10 to 12, 9, 10, 11, 12 wins for the next years. They'll be all right. So a team that does not have a good coaching situation right now because they don't have a coach and that the last team who needs to hire a coach is Houston. I'm a big yeah. Sean Watson fan. I think he should get the hell out of there immediately. And I also think that he is in a unique situation in that normally when guys get kind of in a bad situation with organizations, fans and media tend to take the organization side over the players. Right. <clears throat> because Deshaun Watson had an incredible season statistically, despite the fact that they're completely dysfunctional this year and for several years now, they got some weird shit going on in that front office there. Like, what is your opinion yeah. about what's happening in Houston? Ah, uh, man, I'm with Deshaun, man. If 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 you only De Deshaun, 
if you're his caliber of quarterback, you should have that same kind of input. You know, they should ask you about who's going, who you going to collab with to call these plays. Who you going to run these plays for, Deshaun? He's, he definitely should have some input in that. And if, if he don't have no input in that, he could feel however you want to feel. And, you know, I think, I think it's, he kind of was like, you know, I ain't no black people, basically. He like, man, what's up? Like, I'm trying to get him. Like, I don't know. I think it's some race going on over there. He don't, he, whatever it is, he don't like it. He ready to go. So if you feel like, if Deshaun feel like that, man, it, it's more to it than we know. He, he over there, he, he in the building every day. If he that mad and, and he Deshaun, I'm with him. I'm riding with him, man. There's something going on over there that he don't like. We won't know because we will never know. I done been in them buildings, Joy. I done seen that kind of situation. And, and what people think on the outside is probably always wrong. Right. So well, I think, whatever going on over there, he don't like I it. Think people do kind of know that there's some something weird going on. Like the Jack Easterby situation is very strange. You know, mm -hmm. we talk all the time about black coaches and black front office executives. Yeah. And you have this guy who was a preacher running football operations for the Texans. Yeah. Your point it's like he was they came to him to get his input. So normally I don't know how, well, I guess I should ask you, like, I don't know how often your star quarterback has a say in who the offensive coordinator is or who the head coach is or who the GM is, but they came to him and wanted his input and then just went out and hired Nick Casario and he found out on like Twitter. So you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how many people had that kind of impact neither, but I'm sure the, the top guys do. I mean, I'm sure the Pat Mahomes and the Tom Brady's and the A Rods and the Deshaun's, I'm sure they gotta say so. If 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 Lamar OC was to leave right now, I'm sure they'll collaborate with Lamar. Like, man, all right, Lamar, we're gonna bring this guy in. He kind of wanna do this. They're gonna kind of collaborate with him because I mean, that's that's what type of organization they're running over there. So, and it's hand in hand. So I almost think you got to. If you got a a, a prime time quarterback, we think gonna be around for a while. And our OC just went and got a head coach job. Boom, now we need another OC. You got to collab with this guy, man. This is the guy he's going to be fighting with. They essentially going to be married, right? So how can you just, you know what I'm saying? Just bring somebody here, marry him. Hope y'all work. Like, yeah, it ain't, they don't work like that, man. Sports don't work like that. This is the most team-oriented sport in America. So got to have that vibe, man. Well, it's been reported that he either wants to go to the Jets because he likes Robert Sala or Miami, who has Brian Flores, what do you think is a better mm -hmm. for him if he does ask for a trade? Uh, I don't know. I think the Jets still, they, they, going, they got some building to do. So if he's trying to win right now, the Dolphins probably look better. They, they got some weapons. They got some weapons around them. They got some defense. You know what I'm saying? They're more, they more equipped to win right now, in my opinion. So if it was the Jets or the Dolphins, I'm definitely going to the Dolphins. I Jets got some work to do. Uh, no, I mean, I think the Jets are actually in a better situation than people think that they are, because obviously they were terrible this year. Right. But I like Robert Salah. He seems to be really well respected around the league, and they have a ton of cap space and a million draft picks. So right, right, right. They are in a and then they got some talent too. They had some guys who was out. They had a, they had some talent who who didn't play this year. So if you add a guy like Deshaun, I'm telling you, if 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 guys six and a half or a seven on the team, you add Deshaun, that guy go up to an eight eight and a half, man. He, Guys like Deshaun, he just raised the level of uh, people on his team. So if he was to if he was to be added to that team, that'd definitely go up. And CJ Mosley back in there, man, you would get some guys back in there. And like you said, they signed a few of these free agents. But that's that's doing work though, Joy. You know what I'm saying I just said they got work to do. No, they do. Dolphins built Dolphins right now without they don't get nobody else on their team. You just add Deshaun on that team. Oh, they ready right now. No, I think they I think they win the AFC East even with the Bills rolling the way that they right. are. Yeah, yep, me too. Um, okay, so I wanted to ask you because you're a former player, and I, I just think it's, I, I mean, I think it's corny. Like the the whole Dan Campbell press conference in Detroit, like the biting the kneecaps off and the smiling after getting smacked in the face thing. Like, <laughs> I got a lot of respect for Detroit, and I don't like teams that are habitually bad. It's not good for our business. Nobody likes to watch bad football. So I want the Lions right. to get in the mix. But like Dan Campbell comes out in this ridiculous press conference. And I know about <laughs> this because I was in Miami when he was the interim there. And he did the same thing there. Do players really buy into that shit? 
Because I think it's like fun for fans and it's a cute little sound bite. But at the end of the day, you have to actually go and coach against Andy. Yeah. Reed. To coach against Sean McVay. Like nobody's talking about biting kneecaps off. What exactly what do players think about that? I mean, it, 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 I agree with you though, Joy. It was, the speech was kind of corny. It was a little corny for me, but it matter, it matter if, if they buy it. I mean, if I, if I got in front of some guys, I'm like, bro, we finna do this. And, and I give a good, I ain't saying biting kneecaps, but we finna punch some people in their mouth. If the guys feel what I'm saying, they gonna get up like, man, let's go. If they looking at me like, man, bro, biting kneecaps, like it just, it matter how I come off. So in my opinion, the, his speech ain't come off the guys. Guys like Lee, we weren't really going to buy that, man. We're going to be, we gonna be looking at our phone and I don't know. It, it, it came off corny to me as well. So it kind of, it kind of matter how you deliver the message, man. And you don't got to be a tough guy to deliver a good competitive message and have guys riding for you. But I mean, you can be a tough guy. So it go either way. You could, you could, you could have a tough guy speech and guys ride for you. You could have a nerd kind of speech and guys ride for you, or you can have a tough guy speech and guys don't ride for you. So it is that message is crucial, Joy. And, and and that first message, that's the message. That's the that's gonna be the vibe right there. So I hope guys bought that message. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean to me, like that message only matters if behind the message, you know we got a game plan, then the speech and the rah-rah and the biting the kneecaps and smacking somebody in the mouth makes sense. Like that's just the little extra sprinkle on the top. See, I, look, see, I think it's opposite. I think it's opposite. I think it's flipped, Joy. I think if that message is right and now you got everybody riding with you, now the plays that we put in, whatever, them gonna be the plays that we, cause it's only so much football. You only can play a couple, one, two, three, four. You know what I'm saying? And do so many blitzes. So it's gonna be the guys who actually putting in the time, the guys who confident, and the guys who, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 the vibe first, and then it's the X's and O's, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? So if you got that vibe right, I don't give a damn what plays you playing. You can run man every day. I mean, every play. And shit, if, if y'all vibing and y'all putting some good work in the off season and y'all talking and communicating and stuff, then I think you're gonna be a pretty good team. So I, I, I switched the order. It's that message and that vibe, and then it's the X's and O's. Well, that's what I wanted to ask you because I was, I, I, I mean, I didn't like the hire to begin with, but I was looking at that press conference like, yeah. okay, if you say so. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, all right, before I let you go, I want to ask you about the Super Bowl. Um, I don't know if you have a pick yet, but how do you think this game is going to go? Because I think at this, at this point, I think the Buccaneers defense has been incredible for, I mean, they've been good throughout the season, but they were really incredible the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, really big. And I think that's going to be a crucial part of it because the Chiefs are missing two of their offensive linemen. Obviously, Chiefs are incredible. They're a very complete team. So I don't know how much that's going to factor in. But I do think that if Tom Brady doesn't turn the ball over and defense can get a few stops, I might lean towards the Bucs in this game. What do you think? I'm thinking we've seen this Bucs defense against these Chiefs before. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> time ago yeah it wasn't that long ago Joy. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago right so I don't know I just feel like the Bucks love to play man and you it's gonna be hard pressed to play man against the Chiefs man you got Miko Hartman is probably one step slower than Tyreek and he is your guy on the other side who you got to guard and the safety going that's the guy who get the really the zero coverage because the safety's got to lean to Tyreek so you got this probably the Third fastest guy in the NFL over here by himself if you play man. And then you got uh, Kelsey in the middle by himself if you play man. And we saw what happened when the Bucs tried to play man against the Chiefs. Tyreek had 300 and three tubs in the first quarter. So it's, and then if you play zone, that's when a quarterback play come in. Mahomes is going to just kill you just like he did the, the Bills last week. Just like he do every team who try to play zone against him. So it's just hard to pick against the Chiefs in my opinion. But when you look at the other side, like I said, Tom Brady is the other quarterback who got that same problem. If you try to play man, you got to guard uh, Mike, Godwin, AB going to be back, Gronk. Like you hard pressed trying to guard all those guys in man coverage and the Chiefs love to play man. So it's like the same problems for both teams, George. So I don't know who I'm going to pick, 
but I'm leaning towards the Chiefs. I'm leaning towards the Chiefs as well, but I do think it's going to be an interesting game. If Brady pulls this off and wins his seventh Super Bowl. Yeah. Is he the, like, he's already the greatest quarterback of all time. Like, it's kind of silly yeah. that conversation at this point. Is he like, is he better than MJ? Like, is he the greatest American athlete? athlete? Yeah, I, I think right now, even just checking this box. Okay, nobody played a home Super Bowl. Okay, boom. Tom made it to a home Super Bowl. I, I think even just checking that box without the win, now it's him and Jordan. It, it's, he surpassed all the football players, in my opinion. Like you said, it's him and Jordan. It's the guys who just dominated. Like every time they play, they go win the chip. So LeBron is LeBron in that mix. I put my dog Brian with there, right there with them people. Well, listen, I put Brian right there with them. I mean, Brian right there with them, man. You go to ten straight tips. Uh, it's it's hard. I'm now Brian win a tip this year. He really right there with him. No, he has to be if he wins this he year. He gotta be. I'm a I'm a MJ zealot. Like I literally thought I was gonna be Michael Jordan when I grew up. I love it. <laughs> so it's very That's difficult. what's up. Um, but I'm a Heat fan, so LeBron gave us two championships, so I got love for LeBron. Yeah. But I mean I, it's it's I it's definitely think I definitely think Tom I, last night. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's like ridiculous at this point. But I yeah. I, I do think if LeBron wins another championship, it's gonna be hard. But right now it's MJ and Brady, and I don't know. I might have to give the nod to Brady if he wins this. It's really yeah, Brady has seven chips in football and at 43. At 43, you just don't see that. So if he win this chip, he definitely the greatest athlete all of all time, period, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Well, thanks so much for coming by uh and chatting with us. I appreciate you. You already know. Thank you, Joy. Appreciate you having me on. Thank you, Kim. Take care. With it. With it. With it. What? With it. We about to turn up in this What's up, Heller? Hey, Joy. Just checking on the latest Aaron Rodgers news because we're about to talk about him in Wit It or Quit It. Let's do that. I also just punched my microphone, so hopefully Donnie can fix that. Um, it's a classic radio mistake. All right. A great scholar once said, <clears throat> a Chrysler 300 looks like a phantom until a phantom pulls up. Uh, shouts to Cat Williams. Uh, I say this with all due respect, but Aaron Rodgers probably felt like a Chrysler 300 on Sunday. Uh, today, yeah, today it's still a nice, still a nicer car than I have. Today on the Pat McAfee show, uh, Rodgers said, "I don't think there is any reason why I wouldn't be back." So he's probably coming back to face some of the decisions he just made. Joy, Aaron Rodgers deserves blame for the Packers NFC Championship loss. Quit it or quit it. Well, of course. Of course he deserves some blame. But it's Matt LaFleur's fault, I thought. Look, Matt LaFleur made a horrible decision to kick that field goal. But yes. I thought it was Mike Pettin's fault, though. No, it's not. It's not. Matt LaFleur is the head coach. We're not passing it on to coordinators in the NFC Championship game. That's what we're not doing. What is it, it was Kevin King's fault. It's you not Kevin King's fault either. It, it, it can be narrowed down. Well, look. We can Aaron do- Jones shouldn't have got his chest caved in. It was at that. Look, we can do macros. I hair on my lip. Uh, we can do macro and it's everyone's fault, or we can yep. do micro and it's the MVP of the league and the head coach of the yep. team for which the MVP of the league plays for. Here's, here's the situation for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Matt LaFleur calling uh, uh, for a field goal with two minutes left with two Tom minutes. Brady on the other side, when you have the MVP of the league as your quarterback is eight yards away. You're just eight yards away. Is erroneous. It is <laughs> an move. It's it's much more egregious than what Sean McDermott did, who who I completely disagree with as well. I felt like so bad. Conservative so bad. field goals were a disaster. But they but, but two minutes left with, with Tom Brady on the other side of the ball, you have a chance to tie it. Yep. With three timeouts, you go for it. If you go for it and you don't convert, then you have the Buccaneers pins, right? On like, what what yard line were they on? Like the four yard line? No, they were on the eight, but even so, you could could get yards on that play and not get in. They're pinned to the 10. Your defense has been playing great. I don't want to see the field goal unit out there. If Aaron Rodgers doesn't convert, at least you went out balls blazing. I don't want... 
So if, this cute little field goal. No. Sh- if you if you lost it. by five, you did it. You were you you messed something up, right? It's it's it's, it's a ridiculous call. It's an all time ridiculous decision, and there's no excuse for it. That said, Aaron Rodgers was not great in the red zone. No. He he threw an interception. He had chances. And why would you not run the ball in? Why would you not run? Why are you not running? You have a lane, Aaron, run the ball in. And I think it gets to a point with Aaron Rodgers um, where it's like, we can't criticize anything that he does because he's so good. And like, he is so good. He's amazing. And the organization deserves some criticism as well, but he wasn't perfect. And he was bad in the red zone. He should have ran the ball in and Matt LaFleur shouldn't have kicked the field goal, leaving it in Aaron Rodgers' hands. And then we're having a completely different conversation right. right now about how that game ended and what happened. Then it's just like, you know what? You left it out all in the field and the better team won that day, right? Tom, you, like you, you lose to the greatest. Okay, but at least you took it on your chest. Yep. The field goal nonsense. It ruined it. It ruined the entire experience of the Green Bay Packers this year. And of course, Aaron was emotional and was saying, you know, a lot of things who look different or whatever he said after the game. And look, it's Aaron Rodgers talking about possible changes to the Green Bay Packers. We're going to react to that. And Aaron Rodgers, above everyone in the playoffs this past weekend, was going to get the most criticism for losing because he's the MVP. Pat... Mahomes is out there with like a metal plate in his under his foot and has been in concussion protocol all week. Josh Allen is still a baby in this league and Tom Brady is the oldest man on earth. So if any three of them ha- had lost and obviously Josh Allen did and, and we're giving him the grace, you know, yep. that he deserves because he is new here um, and has some growing to do. But Aaron Rodgers is going to get this criticism. You're the MVP. You guys were just here last year. And he went conservative in the biggest moment. So there's plenty of blame to go around. I don't think it's all on Aaron Rodgers, but I do think he does deserve some blame. Now, yeah. as far as what's going to change in the future, look, I've been saying this since this, the instantaneous second it happened. So there's just nothing new. Them drafting Jordan Love was a fucking disaster. I hated that pick. And it's nothing to do with Jordan Love, okay? But when you trade up in the first round to take Jordan Love and you have Aaron Rodgers having an MVP season, you f- that pick up i'm sorry (laughs) there's no other way to look at it he plays aaron Rodgers' position and there's only one quarterback on the field therefore it's a period that's it you wait period period Period. with a t on the end of it it wasn't it wasn't a third round pick it wasn't a fifth round pick it wasn't a second round pick you traded up to get him for what aaron Rodgers doesn't aaron Rodgers wasn't great this year because he was motivated because of jordan love jordan love's not even the backup quarterback Bro, he's, he's not third, good. Nope. Mm-mm. Third string. No, he's not feeling any pressure from him. Stop saying that. They don't deserve credit for it. All right. It's bullshit. It was a terrible pick. It was. It really was. It created unnecessary drama leading up to the season. Not that it mattered, obviously, because they were in the NFC Championship game. And who knows who they would have taken that would have made a difference in this game. But it doesn't matter. The pick was a mistake. Okay. So you can start there. Yeah. They needed more physicality. Well, their defense was great, all right? Like, they, they did what they had to do. You lost the game. Someone's got to win. Someone's got to lose. But the problem is when you're there back-to-back years, you are doing something wrong. Somebody is doing something wrong because you can't get over the hump. You need something else. Screw it all, yeah. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but there's enough blame to go around. Rodgers wasn't, wasn't otherworldly when he needed to be. He was forcing it to Devontae Adams. He should have ran the ball in, and Matt LaFleur should have given him one more chance to be great and we would have a different story. And so many times in these big moments, it comes down to a coach making an inexplicable call, like Pete Carroll, right? In the biggest moment, and then that's all we talk about in the game. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what Aaron Rodgers did. And I think there's there's some a little sprinkled in here, a little criticism Mm -hmm. of Aaron Rodgers being sprinkled around. But yes, the big conversation is Matt LaFleur kicking the field goal. It doesn't mean that he's a bad coach. It doesn't mean that he should be fired. And he's not going to get fired and he's not a bad coach, but you made a bad decision. Yeah. And sometimes those bad decisions linger for years and years and years and years and years. Like you saw that with Pete Carroll and the Seahawks. Are they still a great team? Yeah. Yes. Is Russell Wilson still a great quarterback? Yes. Have they retooled? Yes. 
but they still have not gotten over that hump. And not so a dynasty. Like, so, like I don't, I don't think that, that Marshawn Lynch not giving it to Marshawn Lynch's like thing is still like a cloud hanging over it. But it was a decision you'll never get back, and you may never, you may never get a chance to be in that situation to make that stupid ass call again. So I'm. I'm not furious because I'm very excited to see Tom Brady in the Super Bowl against Patrick. Wow. Lee. In Tampa. In wow. Tampa. I can't wait for it. So it's not that I'm like upset because I picked the Packers or something. I don't, I don't care about any of that. We got to pick a game. We got to pick a winner. We got to pick a loser. Like, by the way, guys, just as a side, please stop talking to me about picking the Packers. Just because someone with a mouthpiece and a camera in front of them says they pick someone does not mean that they're fans of that team. I wasn't like rooting against the bucks because i picked the packers like that's, that's fan. I, don't, I disagree joy that's fan logic any support of a team means you're a fan of theirs according to fan logic that's that's what it is it's very silly like part of our job is we pick the games we say we yep. think the team is going to win or this team is going to win mm-hmm. and then if they lose we continue on to the next mm-hmm. one yep. the end, like it doesn't it's not just please stop getting it's, it's so annoying yep. and to, anyway. to, to and to your point i picked both of the wrong teams but yet i'm still here i'm still right here Talking to you, going through it. Oh, about the Bucks, you picked the Packers. And I, but I am, a, I am a little upset. I am a little upset. I want to see Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers was at Cal when I was in high school in the Bay Area. I want to see Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is the like on the rollout. That's a superpower that he has. When he rolls out, that's a finishing move that most people can't stop. And I, so I was upset. I felt bad for him for it to end that way. To be honest. I don't um, for him. he's brilliant and he's going to be back next year. What I do feel, if I do feel bad for him, it's that, and for us, it's that um, he didn't get one more chance. Right. We at least should have seen that play Sit on the field, like, like die on the shield. All right. Like, I, I don't, I don't want any, any cop out. I don't want any excuse. Don't and tap. Field don't goal. Tap. Yeah. Like just, just, just die. They, the they tapped. They yeah. tapped. They yeah. tapped. They tapped. It was it was faulty logic. I I I was upset for him, but then it's been a day now for him. He's obviously calmed down, joking joking with Pat McAfee helped him out. But I was upset, and then I just pictured Aaron Rodgers like you saw him in the post game moping. Then I pictured him like moping back to his super nice house, and then like moping into the uh, garage driving range where he you know disgruntledly hit some balls into the simulator. And I thought, you know what? He'll be just fine. Yeah. I mean, look, like. This He'll be is just not, fine. This is not One like, of the greatest quarterbacks of all time still. He'll be just fine. All, it's all in perspective. But yeah, I want to see Aaron Rodgers win another Super Bowl. They got to they see it. To see that happen. They got, they got closer. They got closer, but damn. Damn, right there. Um, all right. Uh, do you remember uh, that phantom that I mentioned in the last read? That's Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. Second of his name, first of his game. Uh, He used to be a real tuck boy in the eyes of many in the Bay Area and beyond, but now he's the pride of San Mateo, California, New England, Tampa Bay, and the United States, assuming he still doesn't play golf with a certain D-platform president. Uh, At 43 years old and 21 years into his NFL career, uh, we've had to elevate the conversation of Tom's greatness beyond his sport to this point, Joy, Tom Brady is the greatest American athlete ever, with it or quit it. I'm gonna quit it for now. <laughs> for now, for now. I'm quit. kind of assuming he wins the Super Bowl man. when I ask that, to be honest. Man, I might change my mind like five minutes from now. I don't <laughs> uh, I did not see this coming. We talked about this a little bit earlier with no. Akeem Talib. I didn't see this coming. I thought that the Bucks would make the playoffs. I thought they'd be a wild card team um, and maybe win a, a playoff game. But this is remarkable. And look, I don't want to hear about Tom threw three interceptions and the Bucks defense saved him. Okay. They won seven games last season. They're in the Super Bowl this year. So don't talk to me about anything about this not being Tom Brady's sole responsibility. It's Tom Brady's entire doing that Mm -hmm. they are in the Super Bowl. I don't want to hear about the defense who has been great. Okay. And they were pretty good last year as well. Given that murky Brady juice. It's, it's truly, 
it's truly remarkable. Like after watching that, I kind of sat there for a second, like, wow, you know, there's times where, you know, you were watching Michael Jordan, you were like, I'm watching something we're never going to see. Yeah. Like, you know, there's times when even watching Floyd Mayweather fight, like no one's ever going to have a record like this ever again. He's the greatest defensive boxer of all time. Like there's just certain and, you know, moments in sports where you're like, this is never going to happen again. This is never going to happen again. Even watching LeBron last night, 46 points in his bajillionth year, like unstoppable. There's just no one that's going to be able to have that kind of longevity and greatness. And Tom Brady really is just smacking around father time. Like it's crazy. He's 43 years old. Now listen, 43 is not old, but 43 in football years is ancient. And you saw that while watching Drew Brees and Philip Rivers in these playoffs. They did not look like Tom Brady. Tom Brady is zipping the ball around like he's 24 years old. So you can't say anything about his arm strength. No. Nope. He, he's just, I understand the, the interceptions aside. Okay. Like, but he, but no, no, but hold on. Time, just really quickly, time out on those interceptions. The, he's, it's, uh, Arian's thing is no risk it, no biscuit. But Tom has made it risk it responsibly. The, the, the uh, 50 50 ball he threw up to Mike Evans was just a punt if they intercepted it. It's genius. Sorry, continue. Like, yeah, all throw, interceptions throw three interceptions a game because they'll throw them at the right time. It doesn't matter. Right. All interceptions are not created equal. Correct. That, that Tips and sh Get out of here. That is for sure. He's throwing pick sixes in the Super Bowl. Like, it, it happens. All right. So, but I want to focus on the bigger picture. The fact that he is back in the Super Bowl, right? A year after leaving the New England Patriots, he's the greatest football player of all time. And he, he was the greatest quarterback. Like that, that conversation had already like been put to bed, right? Like if you were still talking about like Joe Montana or whatever, like, okay. Like, I was, I still was, but now I really can't now. This yeah. would be like if Joe Montana won, made it to the Super Bowl with the Chiefs. Like, yes, yes. So stop doing that. Um, but he's the greatest quarterback ever. He's the greatest football player ever. And I honestly think if he wins this, wins a Super Bowl, and look, maybe he maybe he already is greater because Jordan didn't take the Wizards right to the NBA Finals, so maybe he is greater already. And I'm just like still holding on to my last shred of Jordan. You're gonna, you're gonna hold on to that shred forever, girl. Man, <laughs> like think about this. His first, let's just split his career in half, right? 2001 to 2011, 2012 to 2021. So this, this, these are the two panels, right? Yep. If you're listening, I'm sorry, just imagine two sides, right? Yep, there's two sides. Three Super Bowl titles in the first 10 years, three Super Bowl titles in the second 10 years. Symmetry. How many Super Bowl appearances? Five in each. How many Super Bowl MVPs? Two in each. Wow. Two in decade. In each decade. Okay? That is something 780 win percentage in the first 10 years 757 in the second 10 years 16 playoff wins in the first 17 in the second nine division titles in the first eight in the second seven pro bowls in each decade he's been he's literally been the most consistently great player ever you could it's the same numbers for both decades that's insane that's insane and he might win a, a seventh super bowl He's playing in his 10th. You know there, how and hard it is to get to the Super to even get to the Super Bowl. To even get to the Super Bowl. Philip Rivers played 150,000 years in this league and never sniffed the Super Bowl. Never sniffed it. Okay? Played in one AFC Championship game. That is mind-numbing to even think about that. We talk about these numbers so much that we really don't actually absorb the gravitas of what he's accomplished. And like I know I'm going full on crazy fangirl right now but like i'm sorry if you crazy like, maybe i'm not you've got to let it go like you have sometimes you just have to take it out i've been watching tom brady beat up on the afc east for what was it 19 years yeah um it's been brutal but like after the atlanta super bowl i was like okay i mean he's the greatest <laughs> He's the greatest. What am I supposed to say? What am I going to say? I'm not. Here's the thing. I think people, it's not, I mean, I think people in society today don't ever want to move off of any kind of position. They like hold on to their positions for dear life. I am not wrong. I refuse to believe I am wrong. I'm not wrong. And like, it's like you are wrong. 
it's okay to be wrong sometimes. We're it's all actually, wrong sometimes. It's, it's, it's fine. It's important to it's important to be a person who is wrong. Because one, that means you had the boldness to have an opinion. And then two, you have the intelligence to recognize that new key. information that's key. That's key. your opinion. That's key. I don't know, Joy. Everything I thought when I was a child is still true. I I don't, I'm gonna hold the I I I just I get uh no, it's, 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 it's very important. It's very, it is a sign of intelligence, truly. It's a sign of intelligence to acknowledge you, that you are wrong about something and that you have learned something new, truly. Yep. The most brilliant people in the world are always studying new things. Why? Because they know, a brilliant person knows there's so much they don't know. Right. And Some people think they know everything. It's as simple as that. Yep. And when it comes to the Tom Brady conversation, it's just over. He's the greatest football player of all time. And he is the greatest quarterback of all time, period. Now, if he's wash over you. athlete of all time, we're going to examine who are the greatest American athletes. Obviously, Michael Jordan. Some people feel that LeBron is. I honestly think if LeBron wins another championship, he's got to pass, he's got to pass LeBron. But then there's, or, or MJ, but then there's people who are like, well, what about Bill Russell? Like there's, there's a million yeah. when it comes to that, but I honestly feel like if Tom Brady wins his seventh Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who weren't in the playoffs last year in his first year in a new system at the age of 43, I really yeah. think we gotta, we have to close that chapter. Let me just read his Super Bowl records alone. This is how, this is how dramatic Tom Brady's career has been that these are the Super Bowl, not even the regular season, Super Bowl records that he owns. Games played, games won, pass attempts, pass attempts in one game, completions, completions in one game, consecutive completions, passing yards, passing yards in one game, touchdown passes, and then most attempts in one game without an interception. That's just his Super Bowl records. That's total touchdown passes because Steve Young threw six in one game, but don't worry about it. We still got something, Niners fans. Hold on, real quick. Uh, <laughs> I want to elevate this conversation potentially to an even higher level, Joy. We've covered that. We've both accepted you, you, you did it sooner. You know, you accepted it after the Atlanta Super Bowl. For me, it was when he looked cool in the Tampa Bay Bucks uniforms. I was like, Oh, this is a problem. This it's probably real now. Cause it, you know, you, you get mystified by the Patriot way and all that type of stuff. But I think we can elevate this conversation even higher. Is Tom Brady the greatest Tom of all time? There's been a lot of dude, dudes named Tom and probably there's one Tommy out there I can think of that's a lady, but uh, I mean, here, let me give you some names. Let me give you some names. Yeah, there's Tom, the famous Tom's, Tom Selleck. Well, there's Tom Hanks and Tom Cruise, which are probably more well-known overall in the world than Tom Brady, but also pretend for a living. So close. close. It's, I um, feel like, like people, more people know him, but Tom Tom Brady is a better Tom overall than them. I would say personally. Tom Hanks. How many Oscars does Tom Hanks have? Um, less than ten. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna look it up, but I'm gonna guess that it's less than ten. Um, <laughs> well, well, you'd have to be nominated to ten. Right. Okay. Well, now we got to look it up. But um, so Tom like so Hanks that's Oscars greatness. Right. Because, so got, because of the numbers that I gave you from his for, from his two decades in the league. In comparison, so you need 20 years of sustained excellence. Oh my goodness, two Academy Award wins and six nominations. Not even close, dude. Not Sorry, right. you're out. Okay. Um, we don't, don't go over Tom Cruise because we know that that's not right. right. And, the, and the only other one I could think of maybe was Tom of Tom and Jerry. And I don't, is that the rat? I don't even know which one that is. Uh, Tom is the cat, right? I don't know. Yeah, it's the cat. <laughs> uh, you got any other Toms, Donnie, to throw in the mix? For the greatest Tom, Tom of all time? Tom Jones, Tom Petty. I thought wow. of Tommy from uh, Martin. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> he got no job. Tommy from Martin. That's the Tommy from Martin. Tommy um, Lee was really popular a couple times in like the 80s and the dirty part of the 90s. Yeah, I think Tom Brady might be the greatest. We've got to, we've got to give it a couple more look-sees, but... He is definitely the greatest athlete of all time, American athlete of all time. If he uh, if he wins his seventh Super Bowl, yeah. as as Joy said about Tom Brady many times before this, stop fighting it, just let it let it let his greatness wash over you. It's better. 
It's better to enjoy it and be with it than to resist it. It's such a better life experience. Just, just, just join the rest of us. I know it's painful. I went through the transition myself, so I know the experience of it. Right. Once you're on the other side, it's just easier. It's just an easier life. There's so many hard things in life. Why make it harder on yourself? Uh, avocado ice cream was a very easy, low-hanging fruit or whatever avocado is joke, but uh, where is it? I want to try some because, I mean, this is just... Remarkable. What's up, Donnie? What's going on Heike Loki this week? All right, Heike. We all watched Josh Allen and the Bills take a major step up in relevance this season. They ultimately fell short just a game away from the Super Bowl. Low-key, despite the loss, Bills Mafia should feel pretty good about their team. Oh, totally. Uh, Bills are in a great situation. I like to talk about Super Bowl windows, whether they're open or closed. For example, I think the Saints Super Bowl window is closed for the time being. Um, and Bills is wide open. They are probably going to win the AFC East again next year. You know, it's their division for the next couple of years. We said this last year that it was the Bills division once Tom Brady left the Patriots. I do think that they need to get a running game. Um, that's going to be crucial moving forward. Josh Allen's got to stop taking a zillion yard sacks in playoff games. Yeah. He, that man, that's not good. Throw the ball away. What are mm-hmm. you doing? Sir, what are you doing? He just keeps trying. He's just trying. He tries so hard. We know that you're big. You're big. <laughs> Throw the ball away. Throw the ball away. But no, they, they had an incredible season. Bills Mafia should be proud. Look, you lost to the Chiefs. A lot of people lose to the Chiefs. Most people, yeah. actually. No Chiefs. shame. Most Zero people. shame. Um, they're, they're still another year away. I think Josh Allen is in a great situation as well because Brian Dayball did not leave. He was one of the head top head coaching candidates this year and did not take the Chargers job. Well, then get the Chargers job, which reportedly is a job that he wanted. So he's going to wait for a better situation. Um, so that's great news for Josh because we've seen quarterbacks take major steps back when their offensive coordinators leave. So having him there is huge. And I think the mm-hmm. Bills are in a great situation moving forward. True. All right. Moving to a not so great situation. High key, Deshaun Watson still technically plays for the Texans even though he's made it pretty clear and obvious that he doesn't want to anymore. He's over it. Low-key reports indicate he's got preferences. It's down to New York, followed by Miami. Joy, which NFL team will Deshaun be suiting up for next season? Miami! Oh, no. your team. No? No? It's, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's going to end up being the Jets, actually. Um, Deshaun is very unhappy. And the one thing about the Deshaun Watson situation is that he has a no trade clause in his contract. So he actually controls where he goes if they do agree to trade him. So, you know, they can put together an amazing draft package of 15 first round picks to yeah. wherever the hell they want. If he don't want to go there, he ain't going there. So I think it's going to end up being the Jets because they do have their head coach in place. He likes Robert Sala. And the situation in Houston is just an utter and complete disaster. The situation with Jack Easterby, this preacher guy running the organization, um, having the ear of the owner, hiring Nick Casario, who is an Easterby um, advocate. It's just a weird like power play situation. I completely understand why Deshaun Watson went out of there. I also think that when we talked about this on the herd today, you know, JJ Watt speaking out about how bad it is there and like talking about wasting a year of Deshaun Watson's career is very impactful because the thing about Deshaun Watson and JJ Watt is they are great unquestioned character guys. So, and, and they're not drama, drama guys. So the fact that they are both unhappy with the situation says a lot about the organization. Like Deshaun Watson has put his body in the line for this organization. He had incredible numbers this year, despite the fact that they fired Bill O'Brien, who, by the yeah. way, they also made the GM, which was a disaster. They've been, ha- they, they traded DeAndre Hopkins. You had the incident a couple of years ago with the, the late Bob McNair talking about the inmates running the prison. It's just yep. a very, it seems like a very toxic workplace. And Deshaun Watson doesn't deserve that. Like the, the way the contracts are set up for these guys, teams really have you for like the first seven years of your career. And I don't want to see Deshaun Watson's career wasted. I'm sure Deshaun doesn't want to see his career wasted. And everyone at this point has just had enough of, of the Texans. Like fans have had enough. Media has had enough. And, cl- and clearly players have had enough too, because everyone's coming out talking about what a disaster it is there. And, it, and, and when it gets to that point, the fact that the owner isn't like, 
okay, we need to do a complete overhaul of the situation. Clearly we messed up. Clearly yeah. something wrong. Like the fact that the owner is like, nope, I like Jack used to be telling me how, you know, like, I'm going to have things it. are just fine. Yeah. Whatever, everything's fine. Um, I, I think Deshaun's definitely gonna end up leaving. I think he'll end up with the Jets. I don't love that for him. I actually do like all biases aside, think that the Dolphins to Akeem's point is a much better situation. They're a more complete team. Yeah. Their defensive side of the ball is intact. So whenever you're going to a team, like for example, the Colts who have everything in place, they just need a quarterback. That's where you want to be. Like mm-hmm. I actually think the Colts is a great situation, but I don't think he's going to end up going there. Regardless, the Jets will be fine. They have a zillion draft picks. They have a ton of cap space. And I actually think Robert Sala is going to be a lot better than people think he's going to be. Um, it's not just that he is like a raw, raw guy, like Dan Campbell talking about running through walls and all that bullshit. He actually- he had that San Francisco 49ers defense yeah. slamming for multiple years, including this year when they had like a 30 injuries. So mm-hmm. he's actually very, very great on the defensive side of the ball. I think he'll hire a great offensive coordinator and get it done there, but it's just going to take some time because you also have the Bills and the Dolphins in that division. So it's not an easy cakewalk anymore to get off the ground. But yeah, I think he ends up with the Jets. I, uh, I'm hoping – that he somehow ends up in Detroit. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to put that out there, plant that seed, put that in the universe and hope it comes back to me. But speaking of Detroit, high key, my Detroit Lions, they're coming for your kneecaps next season, but they'll be doing it without Matthew Stafford, who's requested a trade. Low key, this feels like one of those amicable breakups that's best for both parties. Stafford doesn't want to go through a third rebuild and the Lions, they get more of a complete fresh start. You agree? I do. Um, I'm dying to see what Matthew Stafford does without the Lions. Like, think- he's such an interesting, Matthew Stafford's such an interesting character because people go so, particularly Lions fans, go so hard for Matthew Stafford. <laughs> and I'm always like, mm, I'm not just not entirely sure. Like, I don't know if it's the Lions or if a lot of this is Matthew Stafford. So I'm so interested to see how he does wherever it is that he ends up. And he has a lot of good options. I mean, there are some teams out there who like the Colts, like the 49ers, Mm -hmm. um, and even like the Patriots who do have some pieces. Like the Patriots are a disaster on the offensive side of the ball, but they still have a good defense and their offensive line is still pretty solid. So they just have no playmakers. So uh, there's a lot of places he could end up now. What do the Lions do? We got options. We have some options. You have a few options, not a lot of them. But <laughs> um, now if Justin Fields ends up in Detroit, that is interesting to me. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I had been saying. Like, I was talking to my dad during, I've talked to my dad about this situation, like, for weeks now. And we had been talking about this, I think by the midway point of the season when I was hoping for Patricia to go, I was also saying, I think we need to move on from Stafford. It's about that time. And Justin Fields looks really good. And I feel like that would be a match made in heaven. And he was just like, I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know. I don't know. But it's seeming like that is ending up being a possibility. And I feel like with the coaching staff that Dan Campbell is building, like despite his uh, questionable press conferences and his speeches that like aim high but end up like not hitting the mark and people are like no nah, we're not feeling that as a key said like I feel like he's building a staff around him that players like will end up buying I like exactly so, that's a good hire might be some some brighter days ahead for Lions fans but um I, think so. yeah, I can't I just I can't wait Hey T, what's going on in the Culture Report this week? Hey Joy, so the legend Larry King passed away over the weekend um, and it was shocking and such sad news. Like I remember first seeing him as a kid, my mom was watching him on CNN and he was interviewing Michael Jordan. And then over the years, I would just see him with these icons and I remember him being such an incredible interviewer and he'll be remembered as one of the greatest ever. So definitely rest in peace to Larry King. Yeah, very sad news. He was actually in the hospital for a while from COVID, um, passing away at the age of 87. Larry King is one of those legendary journalists that like reminds you of what it was like before the news was 
all affirmation <laughs> for whatever you wanted to hear. He's just a very unbiased, like he had the same tone with everyone he interviewed and was just masterful at doing an interview. Like if you want to know, if you want a masterclass on how to do an interview, like study Larry King. Everyone respects him. He was just one of those OGs in the business. It just set the tone for excellence. So rest in peace to Larry King. Um, it's been been rough COVID taking some legends, but um, he he definitely left his mark on the business. For sure. Yeah. He lived a long life. <laughs> Um, so President uh, Biden came into office and obviously he's getting to work. His administration is working on getting the Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill. Uh, I know it's been in the works for like quite some time. And I don't know, I feel like this is just bittersweet for me. Like I'd rather be paid in the form of reparation, like a lot of people. And like, I know there's a lot of concern about this. And as a black woman, like I get it. Like I understand that this isn't going to just fix things. But it's happening, so I'm just trying to just take it at face value. Like Biden can work on this simultaneously um, on this bill, providing vaccines, raising, raising minimum wage, and providing stimulus checks for everybody. Like it's not just one thing at a time. So I feel like we can always find something to complain about. But I think I'm just like relieved that um, you know last president's out. So I'm just trying to keep my focus and just giving Biden like just a chance and just holding him accountable to his word because we just have a long way to like go to repair and reunite this country. Joy, what do you think? Well, I think it's great. Obviously, this took a quite a delay with the last administration. Not a huge shock to anyone. Um, it's well deserved. It's the right thing to do, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing my twenties with a Miss Harriet Tubman on them. As far as everything else that Biden's doing, yeah, he's been in office for a week, so <laughs> he's got he's got at least four years of cleanup to do. So we probably should give him a little bit of space and time. Uh, look, he made big promises as politicians do. Um, what I do, I do think everyone needs to keep in perspective here, aside from the fact that we are in the middle of an uh, unmitigated disaster all across the world, not just here in the United States. Um, this is how this works. Like politicians make big promises and then we vote for them and then they keep some of them and then they don't keep some of them because that's how politics is. So if he keeps the important ones and gets us out of this pandemic and stabilizes the economy, quite frankly, that's 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 a lot to do. <laughs> like that is yeah. a lot to do. Um, I'm not saying we need to be grateful or whatever. That's what his job is. Uh, but yeah, let's be a little patient. We've got quite like this is a lot to, lot to figure out here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I give the man some grace. Yeah. Like it's <laughs> a little more than a week before we start evaluating his presidency. Right. So Nia Dennis, the gymnast at UCLA, um, gave us Black excellence. Joy, I loved her routine last year, and I love it this year. She is just so graceful. Like, I love how she shows so much personality. Like, it makes her fun to watch. She truly puts on a show, and I'm so here for it. Joy, I know you loved her performance. Oh, yeah, I reposted it immediately. Shout out to Ariana Berlin, who is our uh, is an alum of the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Uh, she was a UCLA gymnast and yeah, UCLA gymnastics is the top of the top of the top. All they produce is just elite athletes and performances. And she was incredible. She just has this really contagious energy when she competes. And I, I just, I loved every second of it. It was, I mean, are you out, are you out there to Kendrick? Like, come on, how could you not love that? Like, it, right. it's great. Like in the middle of a gymnastics uh, competition, it's wonderful. I love it. And I love that UCLA gymnastics encourages that. Um, like I said, they're just, they're the elite of the elite. So it's no surprise there, but yeah, she's a star. So I'm here for she it. She is. Me too. Uh, so Ashanti and Keisha, they finally did the versus battle. Bro, these women are beautiful. They're literally sitting like royalty, uh, looking so good. Like they're aging beautifully. And while listening, I realized that they had hits, like classic records. Like I love when OT Genesis came out. I was actually happy in that moment that Keisha had him there because his remix of Love was hilarious. And I know that she was a little iffy about it, but I'm glad that she came around because obviously like he didn't mean any harm by it. Like it was just kind of, it was for fun. My only complaint though, is that they were sitting down and I wish that they like were able to move around and kind of vibe out. I would have loved to see that. But overall, like I love, I love them. I love them both, love their music. Joe, what'd you think of the battle? 
Yeah, you and Keisha both. Keisha could not handle sitting down. She just stood up at one point. We're like, all right, we're just not going to get Keisha's face anymore. <laughs> Keisha's tired of sitting down. Um, yeah, I wish they were together. It, like, it's they're, they are better. The verses are together better when they're just in the same space. Obviously, this one had some complications due to COVID. So um, it makes sense that they weren't in the same place. Obviously, nobody has COVID, but we all know why the original one was canceled. Um, yeah, I mean, these two, we knew this one was going to be great. This was, this was one of those ones where if you have a man, maybe you avoid him for the rest of the night because you're going to be in your feelings. Um, but yeah, they all got, of course they got hits. Like that's how yeah. the verses goes. And it's kind of like, it, it will remind you of a couple of things. <clears throat> and I love the stories too. Like I didn't know what Shanti wrote, um, that Jayla the, uh, song. Yeah. Ain't that funny. I had no idea. I didn't know that. <laughs> and I was saying, I'm like, why are they doing the J-Lo song? And then <laughs> and she came back and said she wrote it. But uh, that is the bot, though. We didn't talk about J-Lo at the um, inauguration. We just going to pretend that didn't happen, right? Is that what we would have it? Yeah, no. Just, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Um, yes, I love I loved it. I mean, I love the verses, though. Like, I again, I say it all the time, but, like, maybe one day if we don't live like this anymore, which I'm starting to think it may never happen, but um, if, we, if we do ever have normal lives again, I'm going to these versus con uh, concerts. Weren't we supposed to go to a concert before our lives ended? Wasn't there a concert I, we were all talking about going to out here? We were talking about Coachella. That was the no, last- No, Coachella. It was a I was gonna go to Coachella this year. This was gonna be my, my Coachella year, which was mm. quite funny. No, it was like a summer concert with like B2K. Oh like, yes, Amarion. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And oh, it wasn't even gonna be B2K. It was, it was like Omarion versus Bow Wow. I know what you're talking about. It was, yeah. it was that one, the Omarion versus Bow Wow. Yeah, I don't know if, I don't know if we're gonna get back to regular life. I don't think that's happening anymore. I don't know. I'm hopeful. Like Usher got a residency um, this summer and I plan on going. Who? Oh, Usher. For Usher, yeah. So I'm like, I want to get back to some sort of normalcy and I love me some Usher, Usher, okay? I don't know about <laughs> Usher. I don't know, sis. I don't know. I saw, it's like the new, um, it's the new like meme now. Uh, it's the new Twitter joke. Like COVID has become the new, or uh, oh, when COVID's over has become the new when I make a budget. Is this is this ever really ending? I don't think so. I don't know. I, it feels like yeah, it feels like it's not. But look, Usher acting as if it is. I called the um where he's having his a residency, and they were like, oh yeah, he can cancel up to you know day of. But I'm like, I may have to book my ticket because I'm hopeful that things they get this vaccine going and we can just be out here. Get it together, Biden administration. <laughs> yes. You've been on the job a week. Right. Fix it. Fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week on the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Hope you're staying safe. Wear a mask. Social distance when you can. Check us out on all the social uh, media platforms at Maybe I'm Crazy Pod. And myself at Joy Taylor Talks. And subscribe on YouTube. And you can listen to the podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts. Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, and the iHeartMedia app. Thanks for joining us. And we'll catch you next week for our Super Bowl preview. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not. Ooh.